Good morning, Restore Community Church. It's my pleasure to be with you today as we're continuing on in this series about loving God. Uh, I, I'm here with you once again. We are continuing on to talk about loving God with all of our minds. Now, we, we've covered some of the other topics. We're pulling from Matthew uh, chapter 22, where Jesus is speaking to some Sadducees. They're trying to trip him up, saying, Jesus What's the greatest command? What's the best one? If, if you're the son of God, surely you know the answer. We've, we've been debating for centuries now. What do you got, my man? And so Jesus replies, say, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. And he's quoting a, a, a verse back in Deuteronomy. Um, and with all of your mind, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love, the na- love your neighbor as yourself. All the law, all these rules, your entire culture, Jesus is saying here, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So here we are. We, we've discussed loving God with all of your soul, with all of your heart. Here we are with all of your mind. Uh, now this, this reminds me of... When it comes to loving with your mind, we can be, I can be a very intellectual person. My wife tells me that she wishes I would show emotion more. Like I, I, I think I show joy really well. But when it comes to, to an argument, I somewhat, I put a mask on, I calm, I, I breathe, and I try to show as little emotion as possible. And sometimes she's like, Dustin, I wish you would show me what you're feeling on the inside so I get so caught up up here and I shut down what's going on here. And the same thing in church. We go to church and we experience the worship service and we're moved. And we hear the sermon and we're moved. And we go and we pray at the end if there's a call to come to the altar or in our seats and we're moved. And somehow it didn't reach higher than here the lesson might not have reached our brain. Or if it reached our brain, as, as I've said before, it goes in one ear and out the other. It, it, it might not follow us. I can speak from experience of listening to a sermon and a mere hour later, what, what was the topic about? I remember how I felt in the moment, but what was that verse the minister was speaking from? And, and, and I would draw blanks. Many a time I've spoken to people, uh, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the word apologetics. I think it's just this r- weird Christianese, our own little language that we've, we've come up with. Uh, and it makes people feel excluded. But apologetics, about knowing the, the, the beauty and artistry that God has used to create this universe, to the... the mirroring in scripture how everything was set up and it is factual and it is true so this apologetics covers all that and and I've spoken to people about apologetics and members uh, of the church I was a part of and they were like well we we just don't mess with that That's, that's not our thing you know and so I'd ask well What if somebody comes to you and has questions? What if somebody comes to you like, okay, this Jesus cat, tell me about him. Like, how do you know any of this is real? And I've got the answers. Well, that's the pastor's job. I'm not a church leader. That's their job. Maybe you've thought this yourself, or maybe I'm just projecting. Maybe you've heard that said by somebody else. But I'm here to tell you that in in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is telling us it's our job. Sometimes it's so easy to love with our heart, to love with the very breath and life in our body, our soul. But in our mind, it's a little harder because in our mind, we have to pay attention. In our mind, we have to study. We have to memorize. It's intentional. With the, loving with our heart, it's in the moment, or it can be in the moment. And you get swept away, and all, all the feelings, the feelings, the the warm and fuzzy, the goosebumps. You just you feel the warm embrace of Christ, and then 
well, I really got this TV show to watch. You don't understand oh, my schedule this week. I have so many meetings. I got to study for them. I got to prep for them. Whatever it may be, we just sometimes we shut our mind away from God. God, you can have every other piece of me except my attention. That, Maybe I'm only speaking to myself here, but that's what I'm feeling that God is calling us to, is to love Him with every fiber of our being. That He's not just calling to our emotions, but to our intelligence. To love Him with everything we have. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, Paul is talking about how we need to, uh, if I can quote it here, if I, can find, if I can find my place, I seem to have lost my place here. It says, We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, we hear this verse, or I hear this verse, and I immediately think to uh, when it says we demolish arguments in every pretension that we need to be out there on the streets, on TV, on podcasts, on YouTube, and people's faces, deriding atheism, deriding whatever it may be. But I, I don't believe that's the heart of the Scripture. I don't believe that's the heart of God. Then when it comes to demolishing arguments, we, we so much get caught up when, when there's adversaries, when you're on one side and I'm on the other. We attack each other. We hear the Bible saying not to demolish the arguer, but the argument. We're not meant to attack people. We're meant to attack the argument here. And that's not with vitriol. That's not with anger. That's not with a stern gaze, a wagging finger. It's with open arms. It's with love. Because if we were to take captive every thought in our mind and obedient to Christ, we don't serve a tyrant king, a, a warlord who came with the host of heaven's armies and swept. That's not the Christ that's in the Bible. So if we were to take captive these thoughts towards Christ, it's with love, it's with affection open arms and forgiveness. So, loving God with all of our mind isn't a combative thing. Even when we encounter a, 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 an argument, a thought that's against, it's not combat that we're taking here. And so, the ways we're going to go about this is we have to dedicate our mind if we want to come up against arguments, against thoughts that are against Christ, guys, it's, it's going to take some revision. It's going to take some revision here. To, we need to dedicate our mind. Me and my wife, we have talked that we both love film. My wife, she has a, a, a bachelor's degree in film. Uh, I don't, but I took some classes in uni. And, but I just love like getting real nitty gritty in the screenplay, in the videography, the lighting, the makeup, the costumes, the screenwriting, everything about film I was, am so in love with. And so we've talked that at least once a week we want to sit down and watch a film together so afterwards we can talk about it together and that just helps bond and deepen my relationship with me and my wife. But it was much harder to make that same promise to God. And I think a lot of us, it's a lot harder to make that same promise to God that, God, I'm going to give you this time to study the Word, to read it, to process it, to know more about it, to know it in and out. It's a lot harder. Well, isn't, isn't, that's Ian's job, right? Ian's office is right behind this wall here. That's Ian's job, right? He's the lead pastor of Restore. He should know the ins and outs. But it's our job. Imagine, if you will, a, 
a favorite person, somebody that whenever you meet them, they just bring joy to your heart. You just want to spend so much time with them. Now, if you have a, if you have a partner, uh, we're going to exclude your partner from this. So you, they don't get to count. So think of a friend. Think of maybe even a family member. Your favorite person. Why are they your favorite? What is it about them that brings you so much joy? Maybe if you're with them right now, tell them a, a, a favorite thing that you know about them that oh, just brings joy to your heart. I'll take, I'll take five seconds. Maybe you can compose a text if they're not there with you. But you only can say that they're your favorite, that you love them, that you have affection for them because you know them. Did anybody out there think that, oh, my favorite person is that guy I saw on the tube last week? Oh, it, it's the cashier at the off license I go to. I, I, I get a soda on my way home. Oh, it's the guy that runs the, the, the chippy every time I go get fish and chips once every month or so. It's that guy. I don't think one of us thought that. Those people didn't even come to mind. It's because the people that you have affection for, the people that you love, are the people that you know. But for many of us, and this, these are some staggering statistics, that 50% of people, 50% of Christians, think that Sodom and Gomorrah were husband and wife. Biblical illiteracy, lack of understanding of, of God's Word is at an all-time high. Or maybe not. Maybe it's just it's something that has drawn my attention here. 82% of Christians think the phrase, God helps those who help themselves, is a verse in the Bible. 82% of people. We just don't know. Where the Bible shows that God helps all. You don't have to be a go-getter, an entrepreneur, people that pull themselves up by their bootstraps. God helps the lowest of the low. And so we've got to know God. If we want to love God, we've got to know God. And that takes time. That takes understanding. That takes conversation. C.S. Lewis uh, is quoted saying, My idea of God is not a true idea. I need Christ, not something that resembles Him. Not my idea of God, but God. Maybe some of us are sitting where, where you're at, you're watching it, and there's discontent in your heart in your life, in your soul, in your mind. Because somehow, some way, we are praising the God that's not God. We are praising this mentality, this image that we have of God and giving our love and affection to this thing. But it's not actually God. Because we don't know God, we haven't spent the time to read His Word, spent the time in prayer, in conversation with God, in, in relationship with His Holy Spirit, where God is over here. Somewhat resembling, but the true God getting my true praise, my true affection, my true love. That everything hinges to go back to Matthew 22 Jesus said everything the law and the prophets everything hinges on these two so if you do not love God with all of your heart with all your soul with all your mind another verse even adds all your strength you're missing out so guys i encourage you this Right now, afterwards, I'm about to pray, and I don't want you to step away. I don't want you to exit out of the window. I don't want you to move from your seat to go get your tea. I want you to stop 
unless you got to reach for your Bible, reach for your phone somewhere else, and pull, pull it out. The Scripture, open the Bible app on your phone, and just read some of His Word. And think on it. God, what is this reflecting of your character and who you are? Your heart, your soul, your spirit put on page before me? And talk to Him. And talk to Him. God, to get to know who God is. Who Jesus is. Who His Spirit is. And it's not just mouth service. And it's not just, it's somebody else's job. But if we want to love Christ, it's going to take thinking and knowing and studying and talking. So why don't we pray? God, we thank you so much for who you are. Giving us the playbook, giving us the step-by-step and the how-tos that you've not left us in the lurch, but you are here with us today guiding us and loving us. Father, let us take this time to get, you know, to, to get to know You ever more closely. To go from acquaintance to a friend to somebody who is closer than a brother. That You said, I can call You Abba, Father, which is, which is like calling You Daddy, a, 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 a a closer relationship than just Father that which has formality, but I can call you Dad. But do I know you enough to do that? Let us get there. Let us get there as I love you with all of my mind. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Please open up the Bible, open up your app, open up whatever you got and seek God to know Him evermore right now. Uh, And tune in next week as we're going to continue on this series of loving God. Uh, Until then, I hope you enjoy your summer, uh, and I'll see you next week, guys. Bye.